so we're back at the buggy. People was asking us, uh, you know, why, why don't we finish projects before starting other ones? Um, we're waiting on a bunch of stuff to finish the front end. Waiting on some misalignment spacers, and uh, I need to figure out a different setup on the ends of my A arms, which you'll see that later. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the Dana, start the getting the mount ready for the Dana. So, what I've done is I've welded in two 90s right here, got them notched, and or they're tacked in place. We've got everything level and uh, you know, level with each other. So, now we're bending a 90 piece of tubing that'll go to each side and 90 off, about in this location. Then we can basically be in 90s here to go in and notch into it and this will be where our engine sets and our dana will sit down here the hard part is going to be is getting it where we can remove the dana if we ever need to so hopefully we can make the brackets where the dana will just slide forward it should work out because the front of the dana the back of the dana is fatter than the front so we'll just have to see it's i know it's going to be really hard to work out how to be able to remove the dana and the engine will set up about this high so we'll have a quarter inch thick engine plate with some braces across and the 670 will set there Hopefully we can do a fuel cell right in this area because we are going to notch some tubes to go in and slant brace this whole back section and of course there'll be more bracing up here. We got to get the engine on and find clearances, uh, clearances for torque converter and then there'll be some set of uh, hoops going around this way for shocks to mount to and then also we're going to have a breakaway for so we can take this part of the roll cage off to get the 670 out if we ever need to. So there's a lot of, a lot of time going to be put in this rear section. So we're about to bend two 90s in this piece of tube. And Pray to good Lord Jesus that it falls in uh, 38 and a half from outside to outside. I think it will, maybe, who knows. Iron the hole. If we had an air cylinder, it would be a lot faster than this, uh, or an electric, sorry, electric cylinder would be a lot faster than this air. more 90 to bend and we'll be cooking with gas people ask about this bender all the time it's a pro tools 302 bender pro tools 302 we got big daddy dan here today big daddy dan dan <laughs> Even though we set our levelness on that, it's still gonna come out off level. We've learned that over the years, but we can tweak it out. Uh, this piece is smaller, so it isn't gonna matter as much as a big, a big piece. Is. So there's a trick. I'm not gonna explain it because it takes too long, and no one gives a flying rat's keister. Um, but. And the trick, basically I marked out this whole piece of tubing by putting up a center mark, measuring out where I want my leg length and adding so many inches to it, and you get your perfect leg length. This is gonna be probably at most, I'd say an eighth to a quarter of an inch off, but it doesn't matter because we can tweak it a little bit. And we're having to sleeve it and plug weld it, which that's gonna be stronger than the pipe the tubing is itself, sleeving it. Uh, so this isn't a weak point by no means, but the reason we have to do this is my bender won't bend two 90s that close together. I need a new bender. got to get the angle right because we want everything to be on consistent angles like this I'm gonna try to match that on here close I don't know how we can test it eyeball is gonna be how we can test it <laughs> I mean honestly how low can you go <laughs> I think it's right. <laughs> oh, it's way off. Is it? No. no. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had all my coffee and you give me a heart attack. I'm waiting for the third bad Something's day. Something's wrong. Huh? That's not level. <laughs> and oh, I've been drilling plug weld holes. I'm a stupid big dumb dummy because I got a plasma cutter sitting over there that we, I pretty much forget about having. 
because we don't use it enough. We pulled it out, sick of this, sick of this, sick of this, sick of this, and the freaking holes are done. I mean, they're not beautiful holes, but you don't need beautiful holes when you're filling them full of slagged up metal. We had a different design going on yesterday. Oh, and I got so frustrated I could have punched a small child. You do a lot of punching, fake punching. Oh no, I do real punching too. <laughs> Ask the primary school. I go down there and beat up third graders all day. There's no match for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no third graders down there either, so. Uh, no, it's a different primary school, not the one in this town. <laughs> So we got this braced up with some tubes I notched at 45 and we're going to do the same thing down here but put them on a do longer 45s. That's just going to brace up this whole area and you guys think this area is also going to be braced up in the upper region. We need to get some tubes notched to keep this you know at the uh, the width we want it. We'll probably put some type of X tube back here or something I don't know uh, and we need to get our engine plate. We're using a quarter inch thick engine plate so we'll be able to move our engine to tension up our belt to get our perfect torque converter tension so we can go with a more generic size belt and not have to worry about like a douche bolts dead in place and uses this one size belt which is perfectly fine because you can find those belts but on a custom job you don't know what you're going to be using so So we put the tires up there just to get a look at it and it looks awesome. I tell you, I can't wait to the 670 sitting back there and the rest of the roll cages build up. This thing looks cray cray. But I think it looks insane. We're gonna get Brad Hill. If you ever need any custom gas tanks made, Brad Hill will make any custom gas tank battery box out of aluminum. And he's gonna make us a nice fuel cell to set right on this and go all the way up to here and we'll have a fuel neck over here in the body. It's going to be awesome and make sure to go check out quantum machinery group this table is absolutely insane the fact that we can build this i mean look how level this is this new part is dead level anything you throw a measurement off of on this buggy it's square and level that's a record breaker in this garage <laughs> when someone asks about weld spatter it chips right off like there's build up right there like if i took a paint scraper which i used to keep one sitting there i can just scrape that right off
Ho! Le mamacita. She looks good. So now we're waiting on our, our driven pulley and our belt. But I do have our crazy awesome uh, drive pulley we can put on there. And we basically need to make sure uh, before we cut our holes where our engine needs to be placed side to side. And uh, then we can drill, cut our slits for our hose or for our engine because we do want our engine to slide back and forth so we can get a, a just a random size belt. Then big fat daddy supercharger is going to set up here. And then I think the alternator is going to set back here on the back of the block. This is a brand new 670 we bought when we sold the Deuce. We had to sell the Deuce to uh, be able to afford this engine. So yeah. All right, so you can see this diff mount we made yesterday. Super beefy, it's out of 3 16th steel. And uh, I haven't welded the back sides of these, but basically I made this whole diff mount uh, bolt in with seven half inch bolts. So just in case we ever blow this diff and we can't find another one to replace it, then we can do some other type setup and not have this big apparatus welded in there. See, we got two there, a bolt in the back, two in the front and two on the opposite side. And we're gonna weld the nuts in the insides then we have our diff mount in the front. This is off of a golf cart. It bolts right to this Dana. And this has a Hillard locker in it. This is a Ford reverse and a neutral gearbox. And it has a Hillard locker. And it's also the four wheel drive model. If you look right here, it has the output shaft. So if we ever want to get another one of these, what we can do is put a 90 degree gearbox on this, run a drive shaft off that gearbox to the front. We'd have to buy the Hillard front differential and CVs and we can make a four wheel drive buggy. That thing's gonna be beefy. There's no way, it's like Daniel saying, you know, 350 Chevy's held in by two half inch bolts. So this yeah. one's held in by seven. Yeah, <laughs> seven is overkill. <laughs> and then we got this big monstrous freaking pulley from Performance 670. This is for like their pull engines and stuff. It's ridiculous how beefy this thing is. But what this is gonna do is give us even more adjustability, but this is a really expensive crazy high quality pulley you can see they've made their own billet back plate uh, it's a sweet pulley but this is what we're going to run it'll handle all the power this engine will ever put out of course we're going to have a custom exhaust we're going to have a uh oil cooler mounted somewhere else on the frame somewhere's back here but I'm, i don't like this rinky dinky one and uh putting a bigger automotive one so now we're going to pull this diff out and we have some eight to one gear gear set for this this is a 13 to one and we're hoping that eight to one will work the deuce man scott uh lend us some eight to ones if they work then he wants these 13 to ones because 13 to one just a little too high mm -hmm. maybe well, not for this buggy a little too low yeah for this buggy but i don't know i'd rather have eight to one i would think yeah it'd be a lot more top end yeah <laughs> so yeah 670 so let's get a stand stand back and look at this puppy okay there she is with the diff mounted the 670 and we're getting back to the front end we finally figured out just how we're going to do the front end and we was waiting on heim joints and stuff but it's good to knock out this whole back section we can't build our rear a arms until our front's done so we can know the width to make our rears so it's a long project that's for sure but i'm having a blast building this thing well guys i uh, hope you like today's episode on the buggy like i said we got to order parts uh, so we have to stop on projects it's just how it is we don't have everything we need and you don't ever know what you're going to need until you start on something so uh we do take breaks on the buggy from time to time just because we're waiting on parts to come in and we're just trying to figure out how we want to do it because i am taking my time doing this thing right so it turns out perfect you know what i'm saying so uh Hope you got like today's video. Make sure to always check out the description of the video. Right under the video, you can hit show more, and it shows every part we used on it from Go Power Sports, from Performance 670, and from Amazon and eBay. Uh, we'll be putting, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff on this buggy. It's going to be legit. So, uh, and we're hoping for around 70 horsepower with the supercharger. We are going to do a turbocharged setup as well, uh, just to dyno the two to see which one's better. What the best bang for your buck but i think we're going to like the supercharger it's going to work the best have less plumbing and everything just going to be a better setup so let us know what you think of the independent buggy build in the description below now some people said that it's going to be heavy the tires aren't big enough but we're building it this way it's going to be awesome we're going to go take it and get it weighed when it's all done so we'll know exactly what it weighs and i know she's going to be mean so uh look forward to another episode hopefully next week on the buggy we got a lot more coming guys so stay tuned remember our meetup is may 31st and june 1st at winrock uh off-road park in oliver springs tennessee it is free to come and hang out with us but if you want to ride on the trails 
uh, you do have to buy a day pass so remember that and we'll be at paint swap meet in april uh, so make sure to check out all those links on our social media where we're going to be when we're going to be there come hang out with us meet us uh, we may be driving down so we're going to have uh, some of our vehicles down there uh, probably just mini box but uh yeah come hang out with us guys thank you so much and uh, go check out those links we love you and god bless